This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Peace and welcome. Welcome to the Christ Church Cathedral worship feed. This is coming from the nave, Christ Church Cathedral, Nashville, Tennessee. It is Sunday, June the 6th, the second Sunday after Pentecost, and we'll be using proper five, year B, tract two. We've prepared aids for worship for you today, a variety of them. The main one, the worship script, is available on our website, christcathedral.org. Look for the worship resources link. If you opened it right now, it would have the responses, the prayers, the petitions, everything you'd need to join in worship with us during the next hour encourage you to go there. You could also find a link to that same script if you're watching on the Christchurch YouTube channel just beneath the edge of the video screen. You may find a copy of it there. We're beginning afresh uh, over the next eight weeks or so. A number of these Sundays will be devoted to a renewal of our series, Listening to Voices Across Black America and the African diaspora. We are grateful for those who participated this past summer and equally grateful to those who've agreed to come and preach to us via our worship feed this summer, sometime in the next eight weeks. We begin today with, with uh, a young woman, uh, Iman Laura Seiler Green. She's a Christian educator lives in Southern Maryland. Let's take just a moment to get to know her by way of this introductory conversation. What a blessing, uh, man, it's so good to be with you. We, we've tried a couple of times to connect on this and I'm so glad we finally have. Welcome to Christ Church Cathedral. And thank you for saying yes to participating in, in this preaching series on listening to voices across Black America and the African diaspora. I, I so appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I am a N, Iman. I hope I'm saying that closely correctly. Yep, you did great. You did so, great. So, but, so tell me about that. How do you come by that name? And, yeah. I is it a is it a uh, is it a blessing is it a burden uh, uh, tell me um i think it's a blessing but um my name was given to me actually by my um my mom um she had visited my uncle when he was in the peace corps in kenya and um she met a little girl when she was there that was named iman and she said if she ever had a little girl she would name her iman and so that's where my name comes from it does mean faith um, and so that, um, that, that's my name. And yes, sometimes it's difficult for people to pronounce. I usually tell people to think of Emmanuel. You, you are, you're so graceful in the way you carry that for the length of time we've known each other over the last, let's say 14 years or so. Every time I've seen you either deal with another or when you've dealt with me, <laughs> it's just graceful. You're yeah. just very graceful. You, you wear that well, almost as if it were a mission. Yeah. you know, part, part of the mission. Yeah, um, absolutely. So uh, another thing I, I wonder about, just to let us know a little, uh, a little bit about um, the home in which you grew up, D did, did the arts play a role in your life growing up? So, you know, it could be music, it could be visual arts, it could be dance or theater or yeah. public speaking. Did, did it play a role at all in your life uh, in the home in which you grew up? It did. It did. So my mom is, and my mom and my dad, actually, um, they are in their s middle, late seventies. And, um, so we listened to everything from, um, Patti LaBelle to Johnny Cash to John James Taylor to, I mean, uh, they're from Jamaica. So we listened to reggae. We listened to Gloria Estefan. So that's the kind of music I grew up with in our household, um, to classical music. Um, and my mother was really adamant that my sister and I took, um, dance lessons and piano lessons. And that's what we did. I was horrible at dance. Um, I, my sister took excelled in dance and she did really well. 
um, so much so that she owns her own um, studio now. Um, but I did, I did chorus and I did piano and, um, and, and I love those things. Um, and I had recitals and concerts and things that we did all the time. I traveled with my chorus in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, and which formed me and which allowed me to go to college um, and become a voice major there. Uh, and, um, and so I, I did some of that work there too, but it definitely had a huge, um, blessing in my life. And it definitely played a part in my upbringing. Um, if, if there's any music majors out there, you know, that you're, you're always, uh, you're always doing a recital or you're always practicing and things like that. And, um, I had, I had a, an awesome time doing that. Um, so wonderful. If, yeah. So, so wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's easy to see how that, um, equipped you in some ways for the, yeah. for the rest of, of living. Amen. You, you're living in sort of Southern Maryland yeah. uh, now. You're the executive director of a pastoral, pastoral counseling center, Christian educator. And in a earlier conversation, you mentioned you love especially just the, the, the part of making disciples while walking along others in their in their walk of faith uh, mm -hmm. with Christ to tell me some about the particulars of that, of that work and how that plays out for you day to day right now. Yeah. So um, right now in my life, I get to be the pastoral executive director of the pastoral counseling center. Um, and we have counselors who, um, who see it's a nonprofit organization and we get to see clients who are, I say everything from prostitutes to officers on base. The other part of my life is I am a Christian educator. I've worked in churches before doing youth ministry, during teaching Christian formation. Um, and I get to journey along and walk alongside people, including my own family. And I think of making disciples um, and mentoring and loving on people and showing them God and, and everyday life. Um, and I get to explore those avenues with people. So that's, that's really my heart is the Christian formation part of my life and, and making disciples and walking along with people and being discipled myself mm. by, by people. So, so I, I wonder, this is again, just sort of completely out of the blue, but maybe having to do with your life circumstance there in Southern Maryland, tell me something about the, the nature of uh, ministry for historically black churches before i moved to southern maryland i lived in dc area and there are there are a number of churches um around the dc metropolitan area who are um historically black congregations in different denominations and some of the congregations who are historically black are living in areas where it was first a black community um and then now the areas have been gentrified hmm. um and it is a struggle for congregations to, to, to live as a black congregation in gentrified areas in terms of reaching out to its neighbor. Um, and it's, it's a, it's a hard and complex issue of, of congregations learning that yes, they, as their heritage, they are a black congregation and some of their black members have passed away. And some of these congregations have 15 to 20 members on a Sunday coming to church while at the same time, outside of their doors, literally on their doorsteps, you have thousands and thousands of people coming around and about um, around their context. And how do they not necessarily just get people into their church building, but how do they bridge that gap between what's inside the church and out that's happening around their church? Um, and I think that's going to be a struggle for or it has been a struggle for black congregations and will continue to be a struggle in terms of holding on to their heritage and their identity, as well as bridging the gap and basically making it a multi-ethnic congregation where we can truly see the kingdom of God um, with people who don't look like us, um, who don't experience the same things as us, who aren't the same age as us, who may not have the same um, worship style as us. Um, and that's going to be that I feel like would is going to be interesting just to see how that plays out. So two thoughts occur to me as you're speaking there. One, uh, have you had in your experience anywhere in life, can you point to a church whose heritage was historically black that you think is making this move, this transition well? And the sub question is also, 
hopefully this is a time when some majority white churches are coming to the realization that the path they've been on is not sustainable, mm -hmm. spiritually not sustainable, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that also this call to uh, 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 becoming multi-ethnic in its base is at the heart of a gospel call. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, the parallel question is, can you, do you see any majority white churches that are beginning to make this move and maybe doing it well? Yeah, I think there are, um, you know, there are denominations out there who have um, taken some of their their congregations who are probably who've who've been there for a long period of time and closed them down and basically reopened them back up into what is the new community. And what they're finding is that it's basically like planting a church again, right? I mean, we the Episcopal church is a church of missionaries. We sent people out, right? We came from England. We sent people out into the, into the communities to go and plant and make disciples. Um, and we have these congregations that are there now, but there are some denominations who basically closed down an existing congregation and rebuild. And they have people coming alongside and walking along. And what they're doing is talking to the community, building relationships within the community. What, do, what are the community needs and looking at that to restart a church. And the church will not look like the church that it started as. Um, and, but that is the call, right, of, of what gospel work is, is to, to love our neighbor as ourselves. And sometimes loving our neighbor as ourselves means that our congregations may not look like the way that we, that they did when we were first born, right? Or when our grandparents were there. Um, and that doesn't mean that it's bad. That doesn't mean that it's, 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 you know, we're, that the church is dying altogether. It just means that God may be calling something anew in the church. It's a rebirth. Do you, do you see examples of majority white congregations that are beginning to make a transition like this towards multi-ethnic, um, yeah. sensibilities? Absolutely. I do. Um, some have, some, it has happened out of necessity, right? Because people are walking in your doors who are, don't look like the people who have always been there before. Um, and so how do we engage that um, in those congregations? Um, and in terms of how do we engage the community around us, you know, that has changed, right? And so that it's not just from one particular neighborhood that we get all of our members from, but it's from the whole community writ large. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and that takes time, right? That takes building relationships, having friendships that we may not have had before, right? And engaging the community and being and being able to get outside of ourselves and walk alongside people that we may not have walked alongside before. But again, back to our mission statement as Christians, you know, is to love our neighbor as ourselves. And and loving our neighbor as ourselves means that we get our hands dirty and it's messy and it's not always perfect and it's not always black and white and um, and that our, our churches will look different. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I truly do believe it. Our churches will look different if we continue to love our neighbors as ourselves. And in some places, regardless if you're white or black or Hispanic or Asian, when you're in a place, I think, of privilege and you do have the funding or whatever, whatever you may have, um, and you see yourselves in a neighborhood that's cha rapidly changing, but your congregation is not changing. I think it calls the question for us to live into well, what, what do we need to do to look at our neighborhood? Um, and not necessarily what can we pour money into, but what can we build relationships with, right? Um, in our, in our context and um, to see the differences and how do we create a safe environment for all people? that come into our congregation um, and that want to walk through the doors or how are we welcoming them? Uh, to be walking with you right now, uh, man, uh, I, it makes it makes me hopeful. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that you said yes uh, for this series. Thank you. Grateful for the time you've given us this morning right here. Iman, I'm going to pray a, a fresh falling of the Holy Spirit on you as you bring us the word this morning. And, and I'll look forward to uh, the time when we can uh, see each other in person again. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. The bells have begun to ring. Let us come before the throne of God.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree? of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. The Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go. In dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The Word of the Lord. The psalm appointed is Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him, and his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen. For the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus Christ will raise us also with him and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. 
When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he is Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then, indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Holy Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Christ Church Cathedral. It is a delight to be with you this morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Father Timothy, for the invitation. My name is Iman Green Seiler. I am from Charlotte, North Carolina originally, and I live in Southern Maryland with my husband, Greg, and our daughter, Carter, age 12, our cat, George, and our puppy, Ruth. Yes, I say puppy. She is a COVID puppy. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I'm a Christian educator. I'm a daughter. I'm a friend. But most importantly, I am a daughter of the Most High God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, what a year this has been. We have lived through unprecedented times where we have experienced and continue to experience the coronavirus, pandemic, racial injustice, unemployment, mental illness, in-person church services canceled, political unrest, social inequality, loneliness, just to name a few. And we get to spend more time with our immediate family than we would know what to do with. And yet, God is still good in the midst of this. What are we as believers in Christ to do about all of this? Where do we start the work of putting pieces back together? Who do we blame for our unprecedented times? Who is part of our community? Who is our neighbor? Who and where do we go to for hope, peace, love, and joy? Joseph reminds us after being treated badly by his brothers, he speaks to them and says, don't be afraid. Do I act for God? Don't you see you planned evil against me, but God used those same plans for my good. As you see all around you right now, life for many people. Easy now, you have nothing to fear. I'll take care of you, your children, he assured them, speaking with them heart to heart. This is how the message describes that chapter. How will these times turn into something good? What is God calling 
Christ Church Cathedral to do and to live into. And one of my favorite um, musicals, Into the Woods, by Stephen Sondheim, the characters journey through life having dreams and desires which lead them to make selfish choices. Their desires impact their trajectory of their own lives, the lives of those they love, and the very in environment in which they live. They are the storybook characters that wind their way into a mysterious forest where they confront a dangerous giant and come face to face with a metaphorical giant in their own lives, perhaps even more dangerous than the one threatening to crush them. Humans make mistakes and mistakes are an integral part of who we are and our existence. The world can be a frightening and dangerous place, but it can also be a hope-filled and miraculous place. And no one is alone because God is still God. We see in our scriptures today, Adam and Eve being confronted by God about why they are afraid. Why did they hide themselves? God being God already knew the answer, but wanted Adam and Eve to understand that their choice to eat from the tree of knowledge had consequences that compromised their relationship with each other, the world, and their God. But as in Corinthians says, we do not lose heart through Jesus Christ. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day because we look not what we can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Adam and Eve Cho choices in the garden is not the end of the story. Jesus has redeemed us back to the Father through the Holy Spirit. And God is still good. In Timothy Keller's book, Hope in Time of Fear, The Resurrection and the Meaning of Easter, he writes, the resurrection was indeed a miraculous display of God's power, but we should not see it as a suspension of the natural order of the world, but it, is, it was the beginning of the restoration of the natural order of the world, the world that God has intended it to be. The resurrection means that not merely that Christians have hope for the future, but they have hope that comes from the future. The Bible's startling message is that when Jesus rose, he brought the future kingdom of God into the present. In Mark's gospel, we are taught about how to serve. We are supposed to be serving the Lord no matter what generation we are in, no matter who we are, no matter where God calls us. We are encouraged to remember that we are one family, one community, Though we may have different backgrounds, though we may have different experiences, though we may be experiencing coronavirus, racial injustice, loneliness, mental illness, we are still one family. We were reminded that Jesus says, who are my brother and my mother? Those around me, my community, this these people are my family. They sit around me. We worship together. We play together. We pray together. This is my family. We are the community. We are each other's neighbors. In a world so polarized by race and tribe and class, there is no greater witness to the power of the gospel and the reality of a new creation that when believers... When we do the hard work of establishing multi-ethnic churches, which is hard, this is a huge subject and not an easy task, but there are some good resources for congregations that want to bear the witness to the power of the gospel in this way. And let me be clear, not all of us are called to this work, but let us remember that the kingdom of God is not one race, one sect, 
one tribe, one class. The kingdom of God is all of us. And if we want the Lord's prayer to come to fruition, let us start now in creating the kingdom of God here on this earth. As you continue living out your work in the Isaac Project, know this. Isaac from scriptures, the child that was born to Abraham and Sarah in their old age, was born, some rabbis say, at noon when the spring sun was shining in all of its glory. At that hour, the sick were restored to health, the blind recovered their sight, and the deaf their hearing. The brightness of the sun and of the moon was intensified. A spirit of justice began to prevail in the world. Isn't that awesome? What a high calling. What a high calling, Christ, Christ Church Cathedral. I urge you to continue to live into the Isaac Project that you're creating and continue to, to create. Work with the Holy Spirit to have justice prevail in all parts of Davidson County, the north side, the east side, the south side, and the west side, to restore the sick to health, the blind their sight, and the deaf their hearing through Jesus Christ. This is our work. This is your work. This is my work. Let us walk together by faith, not by sight. Amen. Let us stand and continue our worship of God, affirming the faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth of, all of all that is seen, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, and John, the Bishop of Tennessee, and for all the clergy and people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our partner congregations, St. George's Baghdad, St. Andrew's Hinch, Haiti, St. Anselm's Nashville, and Gordon Memorial United Methodist Church, Nashville. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for the Church of the Province of Myanmar, Burma, 
In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember St. Mary Magdalene, Fayetteville. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for Riley Grace Guyette, daughter of Steffi and Taylor Guyette, who will be baptized at a later liturgy today. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Brent, Susan, Patty, Tom, Rachel, John, Talu, Joe, Bill, David, Gary, Becky, Lisa, Dolores, Stacy, Rosemary, Yana, Jenny, Tina, David, Father Jacoba, Rachel, Neil, Conway, Glinda, and Evelyn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace, Peace. Madeline. Again, peace and welcome. So good to have you with us, no, no matter where you might be watching, at home in the kitchen with your cup of coffee, maybe sort of traveling, this summer, maybe halfway around the world in a military barracks. May these next few minutes be a safe home, a safe spiritual home for you as you come and worship with us. If you're new to Christ Church Cathedral, I encourage you to, to touch base with Canon Lewis. He can be reached at M. Lewis 
at ChristCathedral.org. Please don't hesitate to let him know you're here. We'd love to let you know more about Christ Church. As I mentioned at the very beginning, we've, we've begun afresh a few weeks this summer, renewing our series on listening to voices across black America. I'm so grateful this morning that a man was able to join us and speak to us. What, what a gracious and challenging word. Thank you. Thank you, Iman. If you're worshiping online, you, you may not know, and so we take a moment now to reiterate it, that our protocols and in-person worship schedule for the summer has changed today. Uh, we are now worshiping at 8.30 and 10 at the cathedral in the nave. Seating capacity has been expanded but most importantly, uh, the requirement to pre-register has been removed. So whether you're coming for a weekday experience of morning prayer or the midday Eucharist in the chapel or for worship on Sunday, just come because the Spirit moved you in the moment. No need to plan ahead of time uh, to be here. Pass the word as well. Let friends and neighbors know that our doors are open for any and all to come and worship. Also, we are continuing this Wednesday with our reading of multilingual Compline. We, we've read in German, we've read in Spanish for seasons, for Lent and Easter, and now here in early Pentecost, we are reading Compline in French. I encourage you to join us on our Facebook page Wednesday evening at 7.30. In-person Bible study is renewed, taking place on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. We're just a couple of weeks away from our vacation Bible school. Encourage you to register the children and grandchildren in your home or who will be with you that third week in June. Anna Russell Friedman is the one to contact to register. There's also a link on the website where you can, link, where you can uh, register your child or grandchild. Two additional very important events this afternoon. You can find the detail on our website, but first, we're having our first joint meeting of the Congregants of Christ Church and of St. Anselm's Episcopal Church. We're meeting on Zoom. The link for that was uh, sent out in our happenings the previous week, but it's also posted on our website. And all you need to do is click that link and show up There'll be anywhere between 10 and 25, maybe more of us on screen, but there'll be a, a, a brief, briefly organized meeting of the people of our congregations and, in essence, an inauguration of our congregational partnership. Also this afternoon, later this afternoon at 3 p.m., um, there's a gathering to celebrate uh, the Harrison Stewart Harrison Stewart, uh, for the last six years, has been the head of school at the Episcopal School of Nashville. He's the founding head of school, the inaugural head of school. He has finished his work and is now taking a position at the Canterbury School in Greensboro, North Carolina. We want to, as a community, gather to congratulate him on this move and also on a job well done here in Nashville. That will be at 3 p.m., over at ESN. The lower right hand corner of the screen you see a QR code coming up and across the bottom of the screen a, a phone number. You can use these, the QR code or the phone number, to text or make your tithe and offering for the day. Your participation in our life is, is essential and one of the ways you do that is by prayer. Another is by pursuing acts and works of discipleship among us, and another is the act of stewardship and giving to God from the first fruits of your household. I encourage you to do so now as the altar is prepared. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, death we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the, and the power, power, and the glory, forever, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.